Welcome back to the channel, everyone. You know, about four months ago, I created a video where I showed you guys how to use these really inexpensive acrylic craft paints and run them through an airbrush. Now, that video was a little long in the tooth, but it was geared towards beginners. The video has also done very well for my channel, but the best part is it has garnered me a great number of comments, a great number of questions and suggestions. So I want to revisit that video. I want to condense it a little bit. I want to answer some of those questions. I want to give out some of those suggestions from fellow viewers. Great suggestions, by the way. And I want to show you more in depth as to why I use what materials that I do use to thin my paints. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, folks. You know, one of the biggest questions I kept getting asked over and over again is, why do I not have just one formula to thin my paints with? It's simple. It's because the viscosities of the paints differ. As you can see in front of you here, we have three different brands of paints. Now, a lot of us do that. When we're looking for a certain color, we go to the craft store, we pick up whatever they have. That could be a reason. Now, some people say these paints are all made in the same facility. Some say they're not. I don't know. But I do know that even amongst the same brand of paints, it could be the pigmentation in the paints causes them to be different viscosities. And what I mean by that is they're different thicknesses. So a thinner paint does not need quite as much thinning, of course, as a thicker paint. So let me show you what these paints look like on this little palette I have behind us. Uh, that uh, licorice paint here in the middle has the thickest paint I've ever seen. Hold on. Okay, we're going to start with this apple barrel paint. Uh, this is a barn red. Let's get a little bit coming out here if we can. And you can see how that kind of just falls right out nice and thin, right? Okay, let's move on to our Deco Art Americana. This is sea glass. And again, that's thin. That's actually a little bit thinner than the barn red. Now let's get on to this thick boy. This is Folk Arts Multi Surface Licorice Color. Uh, hold on, it's coming. Uh, as you can see, yeah, it's some thick paint. So, right there, guys, is why we cannot have a one catch all formula for thinning these paints. Okay, that, answer, that question answered. Let's move on to a tip. All right, on to tip number one. Oh, actually, before we get into tip number one, guys, I'm not uh, saying anybody's names who left these tips or left these questions. Some people, I'm sure, may not want their names out there. However, if you do, go ahead and leave a comment below saying, hey, that was my tip, that was my comment, guys. Nothing wrong with that. I want to hear from you as much as I can, so go for it. Okay, back to it. Now, this commenter left me a tip that's like, uh, duh, you know, I kind of knew that years ago, but totally forgot about it. These paints, especially the thicker ones, they're really kind of hard to shake up. And you know what? When you get a spray paint, what do you get into it? You get an agitator ball. So this gentleman said, hey, drop a nut in your paint or a ball bearing, whatever. So let's just do that real quick. Let's take this stainless steel nut, drop it down our paint. And let's give her a shake. All right, homemade agitator. So there's tip number one. That'll help get your paints mixed up much quicker and actually much better. All right, on to the next question. All right, guys, this next question may be a little controversial. I had one commenter state very passionately, do not use these cheap acrylic paints in your $200 airbrush. Apparently he had tried it in the past and had some damage done to his airbrush because of it. I can't speak of what happened. He did not actually explain exactly what happened. But I will tell you, on one hand, I agree with this person. Now, I do have airbrushes that are very expensive, $400 on up. But those airbrushes I use for fine art. And I would never even think about using those airbrushes for painting models to begin with. Now, this airbrush in front of you here is an Iwata CS, HP CS. Uh, this airbrush is right at $200, $189, $190, depending on where you find them at. Now, I use this airbrush constantly. This is my workhorse airbrush for a lot of different things. Now, my point of disagreeing with this gentleman's comment, 
This airbrush I have had for years. This airbrush has ran gallons of this acrylic paint through it. And I've never had a problem. And the reason being is, and again, I'm not bashing anybody here, but I take care of my equipment. I make sure that this airbrush is cleaned properly after every time that I use it. I don't shortcut it. I get it taken care of before I put any of my other tools away. I tear this airbrush down and I clean it. With that being said, let's move on to a tip from another commenter. If something happens and you don't get to your airbrush and you can't get it cleaned out as quickly as you'd hope, or if you are having a long painting session, because if you have long painting sessions, the paint will still gum up in these airbrushes. If you can't get it clean, this gentleman suggested taking it all apart and running some car cleaner through your airbrush. Put a paper towel over top of your pot here, hold it, and put your little nozzle, the car cleaner in here, spray it in there, and let it soak. That will take care of the paint. Now it should be, now take this to the grain of salt, it should be okay with any O-rings that are in there because carburetors do have O-rings. Again, now if you're doing a long painting sessions, I would strongly suggest every 15, 20 minutes or so, you take the paint, dump it back into your cup, you take some airbrush cleaner, and you run it through your airbrush to keep it flowing, to keep any potential buildups of paint from building up. So again, is it safe to run it? And guys, it's up to you. Now, you don't have to run it through a tuner airbrush. I have here this Iowata, or Iwata, I'm sorry, Neo. I got this from Hobby Lobby years ago for $60. As a matter of fact, I just looked on Amazon. It's still selling for $60. It's a great brand name airbrush. It works just fine for these paints as well. And you're not breaking the bank. So there's a, another um, idea for you guys. You know, the reason why I always say to uh, make sure you clean your airbrushes uh, regularly or right after you get done painting is because these paints are water-based, but they're acrylic, which I don't want to say it's like rubber, but becomes very similar to a rubbery type of a product when it dries. When we use uh, isopropyl alcohol or even actual um, thinners that are made for acrylics, most of them are alcohol-based, and alcohol evaporates water. And if you know, so it evaporates the water in this paint much quicker than it would be if you used it just straight out of the bottle. That is why you know sometimes you can start getting clumps in your airbrush much quicker than if you you know than what you anticipate is because the alcohol you're using to thin these paints is evaporating the water, causing it to dry much faster. All right, on to the next question. And probably the second most asked question that I have received. Is there any noticeable difference in the quality of the finish using these three different thinners? Well, I'm going to answer that question by showing you what I think is uh, in order from the best to the worst finish. What I have done is I've taken some plain white plastic spoons and I painted them. So let's show you what I think is the best finish overall. And that one comes in is the Wicked Reducer. Here is the finish on the Wicked Reducer. Now, mind you guys, I paint mainly in matte paints. But this is what it looks like. There are no top coatings on this at all. My next favorite finish is, you guessed it, the 70% isopropyl alcohol. And here's how that finish looks. Now, let's put these two together. Now to me, now both of them have five coats of paint. And to me, the winner is the wick reducer simply because the colors are more true to the actual color. It is a little bit darker than this one. You know, if you're painting these by yourself and you didn't do this comparison, you probably would not have noticed. That's the only difference to me. Both paint very well, both cover very easily. The last one in this group is the water. Here is the water spoon, and here is its finish. Now you guys are probably saying, hey, that's not too bad for water. And you're right, it's not too bad. But let me show you something. This is my first attempt. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah. And this is my second attempt before I got to this. Now I did not change anything as far as the mixture of water to paint ratio when I was thinning it. 
I had to mess around with my airbrush control of the air very, very carefully. And it took me a lot longer to get a nice even coat of paint on this spoon than it did using either the Wicked Reducer or the Isopropyl Alcohol. So to me guys, water is not even a contender. I will never use it. I have never liked using it. And this is why. It's too much of a pain in the butt. So, which one dries faster? Well, of course, the water takes forever to dry. The isopropyl alcohol and the Wicked Reducer, um, they dry much faster. Of course, this is alcohol-based. I believe the Wicked Reducer is some form of alcohol-based too. Again, I'm not a, you know, an expert on paints or reducers. I'm just using what everybody uses. These dried relatively quickly. Uh, the isopropyl alcohol, I do believe, dried just a skosh faster than the Wicked Reducer. Now, do I use a primer? That is another question that gets asked quite often. Yes and no. When I paint objects, now these are very smooth objects, right? Almost like model car bodies. I did not use a primer in either one of these. For the water one, I probably should have used a primer. It may have worked a lot better. However, I use very thin coats as my quote unquote primer coat for all of them, actually. That's how I do it. Is there an occasion will I use will I when I will use a primer? I get the words out at some point in time. Yes, again, if I was stuck using only water, I would be using primer. So, why do I prefer isopropyl alcohol? Well, you know, guys, I like you. I'm just a guy doing a hobby and trying to save some money, right? This hobby is expensive in and of itself. So, if I can save here and there, I will. This bottle of Wicker Reducer is on Amazon right now. Two ounce bottle. It's seven dollars and twenty cents at the time of the making of this video. This bottle of Equate seventy percent isopropyl alcohol is sold at Walmart for thirty-two ounces for two dollars and eighteen cents. That is a big difference. And as I said, the water is—it's eh, out of here. We're not even going to worry about the water. You know, it's up to you guys, really, right? The finishes are very close. I'm going to go with my uh, isopropyl alcohol just to save a little bit of money. Okay, guys, I think uh, I'm going to answer one more question that I was asked quite often. Do I use any kind of top coat to seal on these paints when I'm done painting uh, whatever object I'm painting? Uh, that's going to be a yes and no question. Um, my, my forte right now is model railroading. So let's say I'm painting a building. But those buildings, once they are finished, they get put on a layout and they don't get handled again unless there's an actual issue with the lighting or something of that nature of the building. So for that, I do not top coat those with any type of clear coat. Um, I have found when you uh, use a clear coat over top of your paintings, especially if you're using any type of um, weathering chalks, which I use a lot for my buildings, it dulls those chalks down a lot. So I don't like to top coat those. However, I do also paint my rolling stock, my box cars, coal cars, etc. Those do get handled quite often. So yes, I will use a clear coat to seal in the paint. Um, you know, these this does look good, guys, and it and it's pretty durable. But you know, it doesn't take much to scratch these with your fingernail. All right, all of it. It all scratches up pretty easily with your fingernail. So if it's something that's going to be handled a lot, you definitely want to put some kind of a top coat on it. Oh, and I almost forgot. Not only did I paint spoons. I also wanted to show you what these paints look like with the different types of um, thinners on a piece of wood. Uh, this is just a uh, piece of uh, 3 seconds inch of basswood. So the bottom one here, that is the 7% IPA. The second one is the water. And the top one, again, is the Wicked Reducer. And again, I think the Wicked Reducer wins overall compared to the three. That's close to the IPA. But I've got, or I have a much more even coverage with the Wicker Reducer. Still, close enough for me. All right, now let's mix some paints. And actually, before we get on to mixing the paints, I almost forgot I want to talk about one more thing. I had a couple of people who I think are into painting like model cars and such. They had asked if I have ever messed around with painting with the gloss acrylic craft paints. And I haven't too much, but I did for this. So what I've got here is I have some Apple Barrel Gloss Real Red. And this is what I did with that airbrush and isopropyl alcohol on the back of that spoon. Didn't that just turn out nice? 
Now there is no gloss top coat or anything. That is just straight paint mixed with IPA. And this is how it turned out. So yes, this technique does work with the gloss paints. And as far as I can tell, it works pretty daggone good. Well, I would suggest putting some form of a clear coat over top of this before you do any kind of other finishing to it. But again, guys, look at this finish. That's pretty impressive from just some stupid cheap old craft paints, right? Okay, now on to mixing the paints. Okay, what I have here is just an old uh, tester's paint uh, bottle. You can pick these up, um, you know, pretty much anywhere, actually empty, or you may even have some laying around the house still. So, let me zoom out just a little bit here. I've got, or I have, my barn red paint here. We have our nut in, use an agitator. That's a great idea. I still love that idea. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to squirt some in here just to, you know, however much I think I'm going to need for whatever project I'm doing. So that's not a whole lot. And now I'm going to take my 70% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm taking a dropper. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to fill it up. Just a little bit more, I think. Now I've mentioned in the last video, we are looking for a consistency between water and milk. A little stir stick here. And start stirring this puppy up. Okay. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, this one I may have over thinned just a little bit, but I would rather be a little over thin and then a little too thick. And you can see maybe coming down the side of the jars, you can see those little chunks. Um, that is the suspended pigments in the paint. And that's what we're trying to get mixed up. So what I like to do is I like to use this just to get it started. That way you can kind of see what my consistency is going to be. I just let it drop down the side of the uh, paint jar here. And if it was too thick, of course, you could tell because it would run too thick. This is, like I said, this is maybe just a hair too thin. And to you know fix that, we could always just add a little more paint. We can do that right now. Let's get to a clean side of the jar here, so we can see how it looks. Oh, that's better. There we go. And it's more the consistency of milk right here. Still running, but it's not super thick. It's not super runny. That looks really good. So what I would do next, of course, I'm going to put the lid on. And yes, I could drop a nut in here too, I suppose, but I'm not going to for this little bit. And I'm just going to shake it up real good off camera, help give it a good mixed up. And the most important step in all of this, when mixing this for your airbrush, is you need to strain your paint. Okay, now there are a few paints out there on the market made specifically for airbrushes that say you do not need to strain them and you probably don't I still would especially need to strain these because there's going to be some large pigments just hanging out that didn't get mixed up and that my friends is what is going to clog your airbrush are the large pigments get it running through the strainer. I am not going to be the type of person that's going to, I'm not going to go and try to rub all that out and try to, you know, push it through the strainer. I don't want to push it through the strainer. If it doesn't go through by itself, I don't want to use it. And here is our thinned and strained paint that is ready to go right into the airbrush. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to run just fine. I can tell by how it looks 
See how it's rolling around in there? It's like I said, it's almost the consistency of milk. That's what you're looking for. All right, guys. You know, everything I talked about in uh, this video, uh, the uh, airbrushes, the paints, the paint thinners, there are links in the description below if you want to go check all the stuff out and learn a little more about them or even buy them. As always, guys, I want to thank you for your time. I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment in the bottom. Um, you know, take care. And until next time, I'm out.